I don't care what you're facing. God can navigate you through the worst of times. God already knows what you're dealing with, but he's on the ship with you. Let me tell you something. Them kind of guys come as a flash in the night. They there for a fleshly flash and then they gone. And then you left there what? Broken hearted, hurt, when you could have suffered amen for Christ. And let me tell you something. There is a time where you suffer for what wrong you do. The Bible said buried what? Well. And when you bury a thing well and you say, God, this time I'm going your way. I've learned my lesson. Faith is a great what? Teacher. If you allow it, it'll show you how to have a good life. I know people uh, in my bottle of the church on, on uh, uh, Social Security living better than some people working in the factory making $20 an hour. Why? Faith taught them how to have, what to do. How to, you know, you ain't got to be trying to keep up with no Jones. I, don't, I never met the Joneses, by the way. People talking about you ain't got to keep up with the Jones. I ain't never met them. I, I mean, if you got a, a $200,000 car, praise God. I don't have to go get one. I, I, I want a Bentley, but I don't want to spend $200 to get one. So I told the Lord, I said, give me a good deal and give me one. See, I can ask God, just give me one rather than pay for it. Oh, y'all don't believe in it. Shout hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I heard Jensen Franklin said this morning, I was getting dressed. He was talking about in the church he had, the church had just busted out, blew up like crazy. And he said that uh, they got together and he, he hired an architect, drew some plan for a new building that was going to cost 40-some million dollars. Hallelujah. Yeah, and he told the church, and the church was all good. We, okay, pastor. And he had to go back and, and, and he said, repent to the church and tell them he was sorry. He said, just as they were about to sign the papers, he felt a, a nudge in him and said, don't do it. He said, faith got a voice. You got to know when it's talking to you. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. And he said, amen. He said, one of his board members, he told the church, and the church was fine with him. He said, act like, they act like they knew he was making the wrong deal, but they were going to follow him. Hallelujah. He said, about two weeks later, one of his board members was driving by the interstate, and they saw this church building that had been sitting there for two years. It wasn't completely finished, but all it needed is sheep rocket and a few, you know, some things finished on it. Parking lot had been paid and everything. They got it, I think, for $2.4 million. A $40 million building for 2.4. You know what, you know what got him there? Faith in God. He had to believe the voice he was hearing. Sometimes God said, don't do what? Nothing. And sometimes that run people crazy. I got to do something. No, you ain't got to do nothing. My father said, you say you ain't got to do nothing but live and die. That's what old folk used to tell you. And they were right about that. Hallelujah. When God says, don't do nothing, don't do nothing, that don't mean you're not having faith. It, 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 I'm about to say that. Faith will have you to be still. Because let me tell you something, everything in you be wanting to run and do this. And faith is to be still. You be there struggling, but you be still. And after a while, you find out the door opened. And God is there. Now, and you do that, you be saying, I'm so glad that I waited on God. What you're saying is, I'm glad I trusted in what? Faith. To have faith in God. Hallelujah. And I say, Hallelujah. When my wife first got married, people were just buying nice stuff and nice stuff. And I'm wearing them Wrangler jeans out of Kmart that you leg, twist your leg when you wear them. Now, the Wrangler jeans now are better, but the ones I had back in the day, them jokers, you wash them, they hard as a brick and look like they twist your legs. And people laugh at me, where you get them jeans that uh, Ella Summer? I'm preaching, Ella Summer, can't y'all do no better than that? Now, enough voices came to make me want to change my faith. But you got to have enough faith that I'm not going there. God know how to get you where you need to go. When Paul says in this same chapter, earlier, he said, having food and raiment there with, with such things, be content. Before you get on the road to greatness, you have to get on the road of contentment. Once you learn how to live on the road of contentment, then God can take you to the road of what? More than enough! 
Because if you don't learn that contentment, when you get more than enough, it'll make a fool out of you. My father, uh, when I, I think I've mentioned this, my father was uh, worked at a fertilizer plant. Hard work, hard work. And they had a place in Milan called the Milan Arsenal where they made ammunition. They were paying really good money, a good $100 a week more than my dad. My dad could have got high. And he, did, he, had, he had been there so long, he told my mom, I'm not going. And all those folk at the arson began to drive these, I don't know, if this, this is way back before your time. They had a beard called a 225. Man, that, and, and they had, it came out with a road runner, uh, Plymouth man, them things. Swoo, shot by ha, see on day. And, and all them folk at, at the arson was driving nice cars, wearing nice clothes. And the rest of the folk in the community was still wearing the same old thing, overalls and all like that. And my daddy said, he said, well, I'll tell you one thing, son. A little bit of money show make you act funny. He said, it'll make, make a fool out of it. And what I, what we, we live long enough to see that, that, you know, hallelujah, all of that going after it wasn't what it was. It was, a, it was a facade. They looked like they had everything. Just like you people, me people now, the latest new car all the time. What you don't see is look behind that and see where the pavements are. You got the fa finances closed. I'm not, I'm not against none of these things. But they got you bound in debt. Faith didn't take you there. Flesh took you there. That's why for the rest of my life, whatever I build, we're going to build it debt free. Hallelujah. I was sharing last Sunday in the Bolivar Church. Amen. Praise God. Our whole package was about a thousand, about a million $73,000. If everything go right next year, not, not if, forgive me. Wow, hallelujah. Sometimes, and of course, if the word come to pass, and hallelujah, before the time I said, we're going to pay it off. <laughs> hallelujah. God going to give us some money. I know you clap your hand. Where it coming from, Pastor? Us. Shout hallelujah. You know, you done told God, when my ship come in, I'm going to remember you, God. Well, a whole lot of ships just sailed past the church so many years. I forgot. I stopped looking at ships. But I do look at God. And I come from a poor family. didn't have nothing. But faith in God. That's the one thing. When I came into the full gospel message, I wanted to run to these other churches and everything. And the Lord would not let me join them. He said, I want to teach you faith. Because what they were trying to teach me is about the outer man, get the outer man dressed up. Hallelujah. But if your clothing made you saved, then all the folk that's unsaved need to do is go to Macy's and buy them a dress, a long dress, if that's what's supposed to make you saved. Now you're saved by grace. It's a what? Gift. And I'm not saying you get out here and loose, dress loosely, but I'm just saying your clothing is not what qualified you. The blood qualified you. To have faith. Jesus looked at that fig tree, and I'm closing. He looked at that fig tree, wanted nothing on nothing. He cursed it. The next day, the disciple came by and said, Look, Master, the tree you spoke to is dead. Jesus didn't have to look when he spoke it. So when did it happen? When he spoke it. The lepers came to Jesus and said, Lord, he said, What would you have me to do? They said, Lord, that you might make us whole. Jesus said, Go. Show yourself to the priest. The moment he said go, they were healed. You're missing it. Look, lepers is all over. But the moment I received it, maybe that's the way I should say it, it happened. And as they moved out, it manifests. See, faith has to have some kind of what? Exercise. Corresponding action. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is ready for the church in this hour, particularly in the last day, to rise and show the world our God. They don't know our God. We have not properly shown it to them. We've been so tired of what we've gone through so much, we don't forgot how to minister. The Lord said to me, I've got to show you the new model for this last day we're in. We don't know how to model, the, the, the church has to model the kingdom of God to the world because it's going to so what? Change. When she's talking about gifts coming, that's not just money. 
That's not just open doors. But I mean, part of those gifts are spiritual gifts. And let me tell you something, they're getting ready to come into full, the full portion of them. We've only seen gifts in portion. But we get ready to see them in what? Fullness. Shout hallelujah. When we say, rise and be healed, they're going to rise and be healed. We ain't going to have to tire and, and just labor like that. No, speak the word only. And my servant will be like, what? Hold. Open your mouth, church. And stop letting the devil shut you up. Fight. Stop crying. Stop pulling your hair Stop calling your brother and sister. Call God. Fight. The good fight. See, it'd be, a, it'd be a terrible thing to ask me to fight and I'm going to lose. But this is a pre-arranged fight. God has told you from the beginning, you're going to win. All required of you is the what? Fight! How many ever been sick and looked like sickness came against you and attacked your body? You ever had that to happen? Well, did you be quiet or did you get up and fight? Look, can you, you, you got two at least. I'm not against that. You got two at least. You got an Excedrin. You got an Hydro, whatever you want to call it. Hydros. They say that's good. You got any Percocet? Fight. Not go to the medicine cabinet. Fight. See, we're so used to using what we've been using all along, we failed to use our faith. And heaven is saying, when are you going to use what I've given you? Don't you have confidence in the faith you have inside of you? If so, use it. I've been in a fight recently because I know the Lord is taking me somewhere in the spirit that I've never gone before. There are things he want to reveal to me. And I mean, serious fight. But I've been rising up and saying, devil, you're a liar. Get your filthy hands off me. He comes in the night to attack my body. I say, you're a liar. Get off me. You foul, unclean spirit. He knows, the, listen, the devil knows the word. Tell him, get out of here. You don't like the way your home is, all that confusion in there? Cast it out. Don't turn on a woofer and try to figure it out. A doctor feel. They don't know nothing. Call Jesus. Say, call Jesus. Let me, let me, let me close with this. The Lord said this to me. People are crying. Serious tears. They're not fake. The heart is, the heart's broken. They feel like God has let them down. Feel like you sought for him to come and he didn't come. And he, he said this to me, many of my people are just like Mary and Martha. They got some bad news. They sent for me. They know who I am. But when I did not come, immediately, they all got tied up in disappointment. And as Jesus came there three days later, the disciples said, Lord, well, it's too late. How is it too late when you're the resurrection? Jesus had no need to hurry there. Because in the mind of Jesus, though Lazarus had died, he was what? Alive! Calling those things that be not as though they were. And so when they got their mind, they said, Lord, have you only been here? That's been our, that's, that's our echo. God, if you only had shown up, I'd have never been this hurt, never had this problem. Remember the songwriter said he was there when? All the time. Faith has to have vision. Because in the natural, when you cannot see it, faith will pre pre present you a vision where you know that you know that you know he is there. I'm walking a faith walk right now that I've never had to walk in. But that's okay. If that's what he asked me, I'm good. Because there are a whole lot of reasons you can say, no more. But I love God. And no servant is greater than his master. Jesus endured a whole lot 
actually the sins of the whole world. Whatever my faith is requiring of me, I must pay the bill. But what will happen? Heaven will smile on you. What would it say? Well done. That good and what? Faithful servant. You can't be faithful unless you have faith. Stay with me. Well done, thy what? Good. And mother said, you only had to been here. I'm closing my Bible. If you only had to been here, my brother would not have died. Can you imagine what it, what it looked like for Jesus to have been in their house and broke bread and ate with them, loved on them? They had up close and personal connection with him. They heard things that all the public never got to hear. Because when you're up close and personal, you get to hear things that everybody don't get to hear. And no doubt in my mind, Jesus was a purpose of God. So when he was there, he was sharing some things maybe to them that nobody else in the crowd got to hear. And she says, if he had a minute, he wouldn't have died. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. She said, I know you are, Lord. I know I see my brother in the resurrection. He said, no, no, you missed what I said. I am. Martha was Mary came along Jesus he got past the doubt of Martha and then he ran into another level of doubt Mary Lord if you only had been here we think our dire situation is because of God we're blaming the wrong one if you only had been here my so and so wouldn't have got sick my so it wasn't God that made him sick we're blaming the wrong one. Faith will give you right what? Directions. Say it's not God, but it's you, devil. Jesus said, if you believe, you'll see your brother again. Mary said, I know I will in the resurrection. He said, wait a minute. Who do you think this is standing around you? Listen, doubt will give you a dismal vision of the word of God. Faith will give you what? Clarity. You'll see clearly. God is here with you. Whether you know it or not, right around you right now as a believer, your own personal angel that's been with you from the time of birth is encamped round about you. Now! Well, you know, but here let me tell you what flesh is. I wish I could see it, then I believe it. Well, you ain't gonna never see it. Because if you can't believe what the word says, you ain't gonna believe something if you see it with your... You know, Thomas said, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices with us. He said, have you been so long on time with me and have not believed? Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. You see, when Jesus gave him that message, he would have stirred up his faith. But the conclusion is, when Jesus died, was raised again on the third day, the Bible said the disciples all forsook him. And they went into a room. And in the evening, Jesus came walking through the wall. When the doors were shut. When the doors were what? Shut. If doors are shut, God can come through the wall. Stay with me now. And Thomas said, Thomas wasn't there. And when Thomas wasn't there, and all the disciples got encouraged. And finally, Thomas finally got that at evening. And they said, hey, brother, Jesus has been here. Thomas said, I tell y'all one thing. You know, he ate ham hocks pig feet. No, I'm just kidding. Jewish people don't do that. But I'm just trying to make a point. I will not believe unless I touch him with my hand. About that time, Jesus showed up. Thomas, come hither. Put your hand in my side where the spirit pierced and blood and water ran out. Put your hand in my feet see the holes in my feet. And they said that Jesus the Prince, when he got to heaven, saw Jesus and he had this beautiful robe on, but he could see his feet. And his feet had big old holes in them with glistering light shining through them. His hands had holes in them, which represent how they nailed him to the cross. 
when, when Thomas saw that, he said, my Lord and my God, how much does God have to show you before you will fight the good fight of faith? How much further does God have to come? He came all the way from glory. We want God to do what he's already done. He's already died and was buried and raised again. What we have to do is believe what's been done. The pace singer, pace singer said, it's already done. Healing, already done. Deliverance, already done. Financial increase, already done. Power, already done. Joy, already done. You ain't got to go to no, no common center to laugh. That's a fake laugh. That's a false laugh. True laughter come out of the joy of the Lord. And I told the Lord, I said, God, your church needs to laugh again. We have been so oppressed and depressed. My sister said something the other night, blew me out of the mind, said, Depression is, is self-idolatry. Man, I like to run out of the church. I, I don't want to be worshiping me. Because when you are depressed, all you talk about is you. That's the truth. Hallelujah. You don't wake up, you don't wake up depressed. You get talked into being depressed. You don't wake up oppressed. You get talked into it. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of God, not the devil. My sheep, John 10, know my voice and a stranger. They will not follow. Who are you listening to? If you're down and out, who are you listening to? The message of unbelief has an effect just like the message of faith. Unbelief has an empowerment to take you down. Faith has an empowerment to what? Raise you up. Who are you following today? Aren't you tired of not having what God promises yours? You say, well, I done read the word, but it ain't working. Now the word works. Every time. I don't mind saying to God, amen, I I'm missing something here. Show me. Some people say, pastor, I've had prophetic words spoken over my life. Ain't none of them come to pass. Abraham had them spoken over his life when he's 74 years old. Sarah was back there in the other room. Everybody making fun of him. Abraham, you're too old to have a baby. Man, you past the time of life. But the promise was alive. What's that song said? The promise still what? Stand. One night Abraham became so overcome by being barren and no son, but having that servant. The Lord woke him up and said, come on out here, Abraham. He called him out of the tent. You think he called him out just to tell him about Isaac. He called him out to tell him about all of the descendants. He said, Abraham, look at the stars. He didn't call him out just to see Isaac. He called him out to see untold amount. But he was saying to Abraham, take a look at the stars of the heaven. Your seed shall be like the stars of the heaven. You crying about one, I'm talking about, I promise you, amen. Millions and millions and millions. Then it's Abraham, look at the sand. How many know you can't count sand? So your descendants going to be like that. I'm going to tell you something. The seed of Abraham is alive right now. I'm talking about naturally. But, but, but by, by, by adoption, we are alive now. I've been grafted in. I'm the child, a son of Abraham by what? Faith. How do I overcome? By faith. How do I run through the troops and look, loop over, run through the troops and look, leap over wall? By faith. How do I turn a bad doctor report into a good one? By faith. Call that which be not as though it were. Word. Stop saying I have this, I have this. You can't have healing and sickness at the same time. 
You say, well, Pastor, it's just a mixture of words. The devil will take advantage of your words. If you don't believe that, say something in the office and let somebody have hear you. Next thing you know, it's a big old lie spread through, through the, uh, your office uh, complex that you didn't even tell. Because they what? Have heard it. David told them at Ziglag, drive forward, pursue it, what? Recover it all. Whatever you've lost in the last season, I'm telling you by faith, get up, pursue, and recover it all. Something going wrong on your body, pursue and recover your what? Your health. See, I found out how God feels about my health. He told me in 1 John, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may be in what? In what? Help! Prosper and be in health, even as your what? Soul prosper. So I know my God's position concerning my health. He wants me to be in good health. Good health ain't barely getting by. Well! Alive! Leaping over wall, Running through troops! away with all this old-fashioned talk religious talk man listen I saw a woman the other day on the news she's 100 years old she had a big vegetable garden she looked like she about 75 hallelujah they want to know what was, what's your secret you know, some people said gin wine, you know, they, the world quick want to mess you up. And that's, some people can't hardly wait. I got to go get me some gin here. Go get me some wine. She said, I exercise and I take good care of my body. Don't you know that spiritual ain't just natural? We've had some messages the last two weeks tell us about our, our eating habits. Tell us about to be healed, but you got to do your part. Kingdom, eat all them pig feeding them pig go to run around in your head and you want somebody to cast that demon out I'm serious about that if you eat something that bothers your body that's God said leave it alone but and by the way faith has temperance it has control I don't go wait too long I'll teach on now because I feel the stream now well glory to God I'm here to announce to you by the month of November, the glory of God is going to hit the south. Say the south. You think I'm kidding? By November, we're going to hear of, uh, of revival fire. Break it out! Just like up there in Western, what's it, Westland College in Kentucky? It's going to break out here. This ministry will become a, listen, it's going to become a hub for revival. All hell has done all it could to what? Stop it. But I need somebody with some faith to say, I'm going to fight for the will of God. I'm going to fight for the purpose of God. The Lord told me, he said, there will be, he told me, he said, there will be preachers coming, ministers coming to sit up under you. And he said, I shall release wisdom some will stay and some will go and begin to plant. Hallelujah. God is ready. Are you ready? Hallelujah. And listen, having faith is a choice. You can leave here today and say, hey, I may have let my faith down, but I didn't pick it up. And I'm going to trust God. Whatever the word say, every time you read the word and you read it, you once you finish the scripture, and I'm talking about not when the devil's talking, on the devil. You know, everything in the scriptures is, is inspired, but everything is not by God. All scripture didn't come from God. Some things in there the devil said. But it's inspired, God inspired me into what? Write it! Y'all get that? Some people say, every word of God, da, da, da. you better read good clap. When the devil said, if you be, the Christ, be God, why don't you bow down and what? Worship me! That was not God talking. That, that part was written by who? The devil! Y'all get that? So everything you're hearing is not coming from who? God! Designed by the Holy Ghost. When you read where it says, hey, by a strike you are healed, every time you read something positive, you ought to say, amen. Because the word amen means what? 
It's finished. It's done. And the way we say amen, it ought to be a lot of things done in the church. Stand to your feet.